Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and this is a brand new Lego Ninjago January 2024 set, Kai's Elemental Fire Mech. This comes with a large-scale Kai mech, as well as a smaller wolf mech for him to battle, and is one of the main constructible mech sets that they released for January 2024, allowing you to, much like Lego Galador in the past, literally just swap the limbs back and forth. Now definitely stay tuned because we have already reviewed every single one of the brand new LEGO Ninjago sets in a Ninjago 2024 mega review, but for now, let's focus on in to Kai's Elemental Fire Mech and take a close look at this set. The price, the value, the minifigures, and all of the details. Okay, so this is set number 71808, Kai's Elemental Fire Mech. It comes with 322 pieces and retails for 30 US dollars or 30 euros at a 9.3 cent price per part ratio. It is one of the new Dragons Rising Season 2 sets that just came out on January 1st, 2024, and comes with four minifigures, a few of which are actually currently exclusive to the set, Zane and Kai in their mech pilot outfits, as well as Jordana, although some of these characters will be appearing in future sets. The set is predominantly focused on Kai's fire mech, although it does come with a wolf mech to battle, which is one thing I really appreciate it because I love it when the villains get side builds as well. We're going to start off by taking a quick look at the minifigures, starting off with Kai, and I will be doing a full-on video showcasing all of the new Dragons Rising minifigures as well, so definitely stay tuned for that if you want to see a closer look. This is the mech pilot version of Kai without an armor piece because he has to fit in the mech without armor. The mech pilot suits are going to be featured in a series of new shorts coming out focusing on the mechs as well as maybe appearing in the main show as well, and they utilize a brand new dual molded hood piece. This one in red and dark red which I think is a pretty cool look and I think the look and feel works the best for Kai in particular. They are using their same exact facial expressions from the prior wave so you can actually have that nice looking mask design on the back, although I definitely prefer to have the ninja's face showing, especially for this particular outfit. Now, Zane also gets a mech pilot outfit, and this one does come with the actual armor element and scabbard as well, which is really great to see. And personally, LEGO never really does this, but I kind of wish they included an extra one for Kai as well, so you can have them fully suited up, as we've already seen in the trailer for the mech shorts. They definitely do have the shoulder pads, even though in the sets not all of them do. Now Zane also has the dual sided expression and one of my favorite things about the new masks is that you can actually turn the heads which is really great and one of my biggest complaints about the Dragons Rising Season 1 suits was that you literally could not turn their heads with the masks on and they've kind of fixed that with these brand new masks right here. Moving onwards from that, we have Jordana, who is one of the recurring characters from Season 1, but she does appear in a brand new outfit for this particular season with two different facial expressions. Unfortunately, the hairpiece they used for her in the show is long discontinued and the mold has been destroyed, so LEGO has been substituting it with this hairpiece, which I think looks okay, but isn't 100% accurate to the show. I do, however, really like the look and feel of this character. Herself, as well as Cinder, one of Roz's other top lieutenants, both share the same torso, legs, and this cloth element going around the sides of the neck, but I think it works really well for these characters. Would have been really cool for them to get unique torsos and legs, but I understand due to budgetary reasons they had to limit them to sharing one torso, and I think this one works totally okay, and also makes them feel like they're part of the same faction. We also get a generic wolf warrior in the set as well. This is part of the wolf mask clan, so you can see underneath them, that's what the face looks like a regular version and a supercharged version which looks really really cool and feels like it kind of is very reminiscent of some sort of like Japanese styling and detail which I really am a big fan of. They've also recolored the Pharaoh's Quest Sword in silver which looks phenomenal and I'm really happy they did that for this particular character. Unfortunately the Wolf Warrior does not include shoulder pads like many of the other ones in the set do because he does have to fit inside of his mech and the mech only fully closes up without shoulder pads much like Kai's mech but I guess compromises had to be made to allow them to pilot the suits. Moving on from the minifigures though, let's go ahead and place them inside their vehicles and showcase the builds themselves. I'm going to start off with the side build and leave the Kai mech suit for last because personally the side build is one of the most interesting parts of the set to me in particular, but I again am always very very biased when LEGO does side mech builds or even just villain focus sets like these because I think they're really cool, they're just really interesting and I also really like how this one looks because this is unlike any other Ninjago or even regular standard mech that we've really gotten from LEGO before. 
As a fun fact, Neek, the designer of the set who goes by Tooth Dominoes Online, actually developed this concept initially for a cancelled future wave of LEGO Nexo Knights when they were dealing with wolf-like vampires. Now, the concept has been brought back and fully refined in the core system, which is really cool. I love how long and lanky the arms are, it feels like this could be seen as a wolf itself crawling on all fours, which is really, really cool. It almost feels like half beast, half mech, and I think that this is one of the coolest small-scale mechs that LEGO has really ever done for Ninjago. Despite the somewhat limited articulation, because of course you don't really have knees or even really elbows on a mech of this size, you can at least move the hands around on ball joints, you can actually swing them all around and get this into all sorts of differing poses, and it actually does feel like it is a pretty good combatant against the Kai mech, especially because of how long the limbs are. The wolf head is pretty proportionally scaled here as well. I like how you can actually feel like it is the head of the mech itself, which is a really cool design, and I just love the long and lanky proportions of it. It's just a very unique and aesthetically different thing that is unlike really anything we've gotten from Ninjago in the past, and I just think it is one of the coolest ones. It even has a movable tail. Moving on from that though, we can focus in on the Kai Mech, which is of course the main focus of the set itself. Now the Kai Mech is part of this recent wave of mechs where the entire gimmick is that you can swap out the arms, swap out the legs, the waists, the weapons and whatnot, almost similar to Lego Galador. Now the Kai Mech is one of the unique ones for Kai, we also got one for Cole, which you can see right here and one for Sora as well, which you can see right here, and we'll do a much closer look at how you can swap these parts in with each other at the end of this review, but focusing in on the Kai mech in particular, this one is a really fun looking mech with, in my opinion, only one pretty fatal flaw, and that is the fact that the hands are not articulated on their own ball joints. In fact, the arm pieces are just one solid element. I think it looks really cool, but unfortunately, because of that, you can't really get this into all sorts of fun poses. If I wanted to angle the sword outwards or angle it upwards, you can't really do that. It might have been fine if it at least had elbows, but since it is using the core system, there are no elbows, there's no arm articulation, and you can't even move the hands, making these have almost worse proportions than minifigures in some ways because you basically just have to keep the sword at one particular straight angle. I guess you can kind of wiggle it around on the Technic pin like this, but it definitely isn't good enough compared to a lot of other mechs which have had hands that you can actually mount on ball joints, and to me that is a definite big flaw to the set. Then again, the set is primarily meant to be displayed, built, and played with by children, especially younger children, so I understand the compromises made in that, but it definitely is disappointing because articulation is severely limited in that sense. The other way that articulation is pretty limited here is that unfortunately, there is the inclusion of this specialized clip element on the back of the feet, which prevents you from actually bending the feet backwards too much. The further you bend it back, it will just go ahead and pop off. Now, the reason for that is for stability. Because of in the past, LEGO mechs like Exoforce mechs had a lot of stability issues, LEGO designers have now overcompensated and have been including stoppers like these to prevent you from actually bending the foot backwards. Unfortunately, that means you can't really get it into a ton of different poses. If I want to get this into a walking pose where both feet are flat on the ground, well, I can't really do that because I can't bend the foot backwards enough. I must have it standing perfectly straight, almost like a statue or action figure, where that is pretty much the only stance that I can get it in, and to me that is a little bit disappointing. Now thankfully it is Lego, so you can easily remove it, and I know why it's there. It is there to allow kids to actually have the option to play with it and to be able to just take a mech, plop it down, and have it stand up no matter how hard you plop it down as a kid, and these go through significant playtesting, but as an adult fan, who I fully admit this set is not made for me, I just wish that it had a little bit more articulation. That being said, because of those pieces, this mech is incredibly stable. You can be very, very rough with this mech, and it will not break. You can take it from, like, pretty much any sort of position, slap it down on the ground a few times, and as long as you kind of just play around with it, it will stand. And that is definitely a testament to how well designed these mechs are to be played with by children. Again, the entire point of these are not to have perfect, picture-perfect display models to put on a shelf in a perfect pose and leave them there. These are meant to be played with, and so I definitely do understand the limitations that come with building a playscale mech like this. Now, one thing that's really cool that they've done with the mech is they've recolored the previous energy element, which appeared in Dragon's Rising Season 1, in transparent blue and transparent yellow. This time we're getting 
setting it in transparent orange, which is really cool to add on to the chrono steel look and feel for the elemental energy surging off the mechs. Very interesting how canonically these are made of chrono steel, so I think that's a pretty cool thing to bring back from Season 7, Hands of Time. But overall, this is a pretty dynamic looking mech. It is yet another Kai mech. We've gotten like two core mechs from him already. We've gotten a ton of different ones, but this one is a little bit more beefed up, and I do appreciate how they were able to introduce these brand new shell elements for SCCBS to make the mech feel that much more beefy. Now again, there's one last thing that I want to point out, and that is this does have waist articulation, which is really nice. This is all thanks to a brand new connector element, which was introduced for this wave of mechs, which allows you to very easily introduce waist articulation into all sorts of mechs. And the great thing is that, well, the entire point of this is that you can mix and match the different pieces of all sorts of different mechs. So you can place Kai's upper torso on Cole's lower torso mech-wise, which you can see right here, giving it a pretty different look and feel for it. You can even swap out one of the arms if you want to give it an arm from Sora's mech. You can go ahead and do that. You can pretty much go crazy with the different combinations here, and that is kind of the same thing that you can do with most LEGO mechs, as long as they're mounted on like one ball joint. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it, but I really do like how they were able to really market it as a play feature this time. It is something that they really want to emphasize with these particular builds, is that you can take them apart, you can put different pieces of mechs on different types of builds here, and you can really just go crazy with what you want to do with all the different configurations, which is something I really do appreciate, and definitely makes it feel like there's so much fun to be had with this particular mech system, because you can just kind of go wild in terms of whatever limbs you want to put on. It gives you a ton of components elements so you can just take torsos take limbs and whatnot and just swap them back and forth with each other in the true lego play fashion and it's really easy to do so and you get a lot of component parts to do that with this system Reconfiguring Kai's mech though, we can focus in on that as we wrap up the review. For 30 US dollars, getting a pretty decent sized Kai mech as well as an opponent mech to fight is something I actually really do appreciate. I think it is a pretty good valued set. A lot of these other mechs, like Sora's mech, which you see right here, are worth $20. So if you were to take one of the mechs and say it's worth $20, I think that the addition of extra minifigures as well as an extra side build for the wolves definitely brings this up to 30. Add to the fact that Kai's mech is actually a lot bulkier than a lot of the other mechs that we got for this wave. It's got long legs, it's got long arms, it's, it's got really big proportions to it, and I feel like this is a really, really solid LEGO Ninjago playset. Is it one of my favorite mechs that we've ever gotten from Ninjago? Definitely not. This is certainly geared more towards kids, but it is one of the most playable, and honestly, that's what matters the most. With that, we have summed up this look at Kai's mech. Thank you so much for watching this review, and let me know in the comments, are you going to be picking up this set? Have you gotten it already? And what do you think of the model? All right, and with that, we have summed up a brand new Ninjago 2024 review. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the set. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Are you going to be buying this set yourself? And of course, thank you so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. Thanks so much for tuning in, and bye for now.